Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. I'm Bowtie David. We live here in Destin, Florida, Zone 9B, about two blocks from Zone 9A. And today we are finally going to be putting together the compost video. I've been promising for weeks. I know, it's been a long time. I actually recorded one segment of this video a little over a month ago, where I broke out the compost for the garden, uh, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I was very disturbed right after I recorded that with so many YouTubers that were talking so badly about compost, and then they start describing problems, and none of the problems that they described had anything to do with compost. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the definition of compost and what compost really is. And that's, it's very important. Uh, it is, this video is coming out in the early May, and so by the time this video comes out, we will have already started recording garden tours for May of 2024. <sighs> Seems like I just finished April of 2024. I did record the uh, raised garden bed tour a little bit late, but we're going to get that hopefully in earlier in the month. Um, so we had, we had some setbacks. So that's neither here nor there. Be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life on YouTube if you have not already so you don't miss a thing. Videos come out here on YouTube first. For those of you who have subscribed already, you are my heroes. And subscribing is free, folks. There's no cost to subscribe. So you have really, those of you who have subscribed have really helped make Bowtie Life what it is today, and I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Well, folks, I've been talking about these compost piles every month for the past year. Yeah, actually year and a half. I think we started this in the end of 2022, this middle one here. This has actually been sitting here. It's wood chips from the end of 2020, uh, middle of early 2022. So this stuff has been sitting here a year. Let me show you. You see all that white stuff on there? That is um, fungal growth that's breaking down the wood chips is actually already done a lot. I am actually over there filling the bean bed that I just recorded the other video for. And I saw this and I thought, nah, I gotta include you guys in this because this is really interesting. Just look at the, all the, this thing here is covered with the fungal growth as it's breaking down that wood chip. A lot of that's broken down. What I'm doing here is I'm getting a layer of, I've, I've put the, in fact, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of this video to that other video that came out uh, March 29th. But uh, this is that same day. I'm putting a layer of that horse muck, the horse bedding compost. It's, I call it horse muck. It's been sitting there for over two years. I'm putting in layers of wheelbarrow loads of this stuff from all three bins. This is the wood chip. I'm going to do about two scoops of that. This is my compost from my lawn clippings, from uh, kitchen scraps, from leaves I've collected around the property, and some leaves I've collected from other properties where I know they do organic gardening. And uh, some of it, I know I got a lot from the church building one time, maybe twice, I can't remember quite for sure. And then over on the far side over here is the bin that I got from my neighbor early last year. And it has been sitting here. I know that he has sprayed stuff sparingly on his property. It has been sitting here in the rain and the irrigation for a year. And I am going to call it remediated. And I'm going to use a little bit of that as well. So I'm going to end up taking three scoops of the wood chips, probably about six scoops of my good compost and one scoop of the neighbor's grass. And I'm going to put it in a wheelbarrow. I'm going to dump it in and make a layer of about four loads of just that. So that is the compost. What I did here with the with the uh, wood chips, I actually scraped off the top, I don't know, four inches because it was a lot of untouched wood chip. It had been dry. You'll see there's a lot of stuff here. In fact, if I come in here 
and scoop off the top. There is actually a lot of fresh kitchen scraps in here. Uh, I'm looking at some banana peel. See, there's a banana peel that's just brown. So I will take the top uh, foot off of this and that's gonna be the bottom of this, this bin, one of these two bins when I start the compost for 2025 probably tomorrow. So that is my cycle for this. Anything left of these, I will put some of all these into that final bin that's gonna start for next year because I want it to be inoculated with all this rich biome. Go watch that other video. I mentioned briefly about how important that biome is in the garden. You want that biome, you want those worms, uh, and you want the, the, the insects, and the creepy crawlies, and the bacteria, and the fungi, and everything else that grows in there. So in that last segment, I was talking about breaking open these compost bins for the first time in a year. Yep, I let my compost sit for a year. I do try to turn it um, and it doesn't always happen. But first thing I wanna talk about here is what is compost? And if you look up in the dictionary, it's decayed organic material used for feeding plants and gardens. Decayed organic material. Now. First thing I hear people talking about, do I want to put cow manure on my garden? And well, not fresh cow manure, people. Fresh cow manure will bring disease and pathogens and other things into the garden and needs to be processed first. There are a few uh, manures that you don't have to, I, I believe rabbit manure is supposed to be really good for the garden we don't have rabbits so we don't have that uh, cow manure goat manure all these manures they are not decayed organic material used for feeding they're not decayed they're fresh and that's not great for your garden cow poo will create a mud the thick mud and not be good for the garden uh, so got to keep that in mind as far as the processing. This stuff I'm sitting on here has been processing for over a year. Another thing that people put into uh, the compost and into their garden is what we talked about here, the wood chips. And if you've seen my compost uh, that I do use, it looks like it has a lot of wood chips in it. And that those wood chips have been sitting for two years. Now, if I just took fresh wood chips and spread it over my garden, there's something about it will soak up all the nitrogen and rob the garden of nitrogen. Well, the stuff I put in mine has been sitting for two years. It's already robbed all the nitrogen. Where is it getting its nitrogen? Where is it getting all this nitrogen from? <coughs> well, how about the other stuff in that horse muck that I get? Another place that it gets it is from the rain. Every time it rains, there's nitrogen in the rain. So that mountain of compost that you've seen me show in my videos in the past has been being rained on for years. And it's very, very old parts of it. And so when you see wood chips in there, they might have been holding nitrogen, but they're still holding it and they're decaying and it's decaying nicely. <clears throat> Another thing that goes in manures is poisons. In fact, one person that I, one YouTuber that has nearly 100,000 viewers talked about don't ever use compost in your garden because of the poisons that might be in it. Well, the poisons are not the compost and you need to find out about the poison. First thing, first thing first, people, ask. Find out about where the compost is coming from. Find out what kind of stuff is put in it. Some places might not know. The equestrian center that I get my horse muck from, they don't have a whole lot of idea, but they do know certain things about the stuff that goes into their horse muck. They get special hay, I believe. They, they use good wood chip. They, they use a lot of stuff that I decided was okay. All that is beside the fact, what you do is you just take it and test it yourself. And the way you, you test it, uh, Jessica over at Roots and Refuge, they had a whole poison issue with their compost. They remediated it. But the way you test it is you try to grow something like beans in it. 
beans will not have good germination. They will grow up mutated, shriveled leaves, and die quickly if it has poisons in it. And so I've grown a lot of beans in this horse muck, so I have tested it repeatedly. And in fact, uh, I'd like to show you right here my bean wall from a couple years ago that I was very pleased with. But you can test it yourself. You can also take it to a lab. Some of those tests do get a little expensive. I'm not sure about about a lot of those. I have, I actually have a test, but it doesn't test for poisons. Another thing that thing that can happen to poison like this bin over here and I said in that video segment that I, we just did is poisons can be remediated over time now all this compost stuff and, it, and it's funny here you go I've said this before and I'll say it again good compost will either take time a lot of work or a combination of the two in other words you can work that compost flip it every other day every two or three days you can get it broken down you can keep it processed that using the 18 day compost process which I did a series of videos on I wasn't totally impressed with it I'll admit but I did it I tried it and yeah meh for me I'm, I'm not crazy about it. it was too much work for me I can't do that much work I need to fix this so where it's not going to be in your way kind of bugging me that's my cue sheet right there okay so that's work the other way is time you can let a pile sit and eventually it doesn't matter what things what poisons are used in a compost they will be washed out this pile gets rained on it gets irrigated on it sits here and they will go into the ground now if you say oh don't let it go in the ground where are we going to let it go are we going to throw it in the trash? Where's it going to go? In the ground. Are we going to clean it? Where's it going to go? It's going to go in the ground. It's going to go in the ground, unfortunately. And I hate the fact that we're using things like Roundup, the glyphosate, in, in, our, in our yards and in our gardens. It's a terrible travesty, in my opinion. It is, it is just, it is not good. Don't use those things. But that's what's in that pile over there. I let this thing sit for a year and a half. And it's, it actually has been a year and a half and it will eventually wash those poisons out now there's a lot of things to consider with poisons glyphosate is one of the worst things it is it it it, it is as far as i know a, ca a cancer causing agent it's a large molecule so it stays in the compost a long time but it will come out it will decrease it has a half-life okay half-life in other words if it has a half-life of six months then in six months there will be half of what there was Another six months, there will be a half of that. Another six months, there will be half of that. Things do have half-lives and will, and will decrease their concentration in the compost. Now, I have been maintaining this little pile that you saw me dig off the top foot. It's sitting down here. There's a lot of kitchen scraps in there. I'm trying to figure out what this is. There is orange stuff in there now. This is 35 days after. I don't know what that is. I think it's some kind of, I don't know what that is. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Be, ca you, be careful with your compost. Yes, compost is a good thing though. Use the right kind of compost. Don't be using raw stuff, people. Raw stuff is not good. If I go and pull a bunch of dollar weed out of my garden, throw it in here, and then immediately throw it back in the garden, you know what I'm gonna have in my garden? A lot more dollar weed. The seeds, in fact, this pile is very interesting. This thing has been sitting here for 35 days. You can see it over my shoulder here. Is there anything growing in it? No, because it's been buried and all those seed, weed seeds have tried to sprout They've been smothered, they've died out. There is nothing growing back here. Everything else in the whole garden is growing, nothing growing over here. So time is a, is a wonderful thing. I like the two year compost. If I had a little more space, I would definitely do two years. Maybe one day I'll get the, my three bin system here into a three year system. So I have a snail crawling on my shoe.
Okay. Little tiny one. So there you have it. What I think is important information concerning compost and what it is. Just it, the definition, be sure it's decayed. The stuff that can be in it, you gotta be careful about what goes in it. I did mention about the uh, manure and I know some people will not use compost that has the manure of animals that eat proteins. In other words, other animals like humans or dogs. And that is something that I'm not comfortable with. I don't know that I know enough about it, but I don't put dog and human compost uh, manure in my compost. You have to decide on your own, do your research. Poisons, that's an important thing. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions, talk to people. We got so many people to at a point where they don't want to talk to anybody and just take a minute. This is important because this is what's going in the food that you're growing in your garden, especially if you're growing a vegetable garden. If you're only growing flowers, I wouldn't be so obsessive compulsive about it. I try to be with my vegetable garden especially. Thank you for following along today. Uh, for those of you who have subscribed, to Bowtie Life on YouTube. You are my heroes. You help grow Bowtie Life to what it is today. We're working hard to grow the channel to the next level. Once we reach that point, we'll be able to do so much more. For those of you just finding Bowtie Life for the first time, this is my own personal journal of everything going on in the garden. With my ADHD brain, I have tried journaling, photography, the little apps on the phones, and these videos really speak to my brain. I go back and watch these videos frequently. So be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free, by the way. You don't have to pay. It's not going to charge you anything to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there to Bowtie Life on YouTube so you don't miss a thing happening in the garden as I document all the important events and share our life. Another way you can help grow the channel is, of course, hit the thumbs up on this video and share it on your social media with friends who might be, uh-oh, putting manure on, live manure on their beds. That's a dangerous thing. So I do know that like cow and goat manure needs to sit for a while and compost. Horse manure, same thing. So that's what I wanted to say about compost. Not a lot. It's just what I've been learning and what I've been practicing. Y'all have a blessed day. So this is Editing Dave here, and I don't hardly ever do this. In fact, this may be the first time I've put something after the closing credits, but <laughs> here's a little bonus. I wanted to show you, this is six days after the rest of this video was recorded and six weeks after most of it. But I wanted to show you the very bottom of this compost bin. This middle bin is finally empty. I'm about to pull out the rest of this beautiful stuff and put it on a tarp, which you can barely see the corner of right there. There's a tarp underneath there with remaining compost that I'll use on random stuff for the next month but yeah this stuff is gorgeous it's rich looking it's dark i'm getting down to the very bottom where there's actually sand hello mr bird how are you doing today wow he's right above me anyway i just thought you'd be interested in seeing the concentrated product down here it's it's beautiful compost this is literally wide compost Again, y'all have a blessed day.